With more on what the growing tensions mean for businessmen and big business, we bring in billionaire Najib Suarez. Mr. Suarez is the head of Orscom Telecom. It is the biggest mobile phone operator in the Middle East, and it is also Egypt's largest telecom company. He is now with us on the phone from Alguna, Egypt. Mr. Suarez, thanks so much for joining us this morning. A former Egyptian Air Force captain went on state TV and said that Mubarak has ordered all businessmen be removed from the government. Are businessmen being sacrificed? Are they being turned into scapegoats? I think uh, they're being turned to scapegoats, but uh, that is not the issue, you know. Uh, I think uh, the problem uh, is when a businessman is in government is the conflict of interest, when he is governing and he still his companies are operating. I mean, in the States, uh, trust structures that take care of the businesses while the person in charge is, uh, uh, is in office, like George Schultz and all these people. So that is a system we don't have, so they've been taken as a scapegoat. Uh, but frankly speaking, that's not the biggest problem right now. So, so Mr. Sawiris, before we move on, let me just ask you the question. Do you think it is the right thing for Mr. Mubarak to do right now, whether or not he gives up office or not, to take these businessmen out of the cabinet? No, I don't think so. I think uh, the right thing to do now is immediately to uh, to uh, announce the the, uh, uh, the, uh, the nullification of our current parliament because people have the old people believe that this parliament uh, does not represent them. Uh, the second point is to form a national unity government, partly from opposition, partly from the governing bodies right now by the same person who has a lot of respect in people and so does the prime, uh, the vice president, uh, Mr. Suleiman and Mr. Shafi. They have a lot of credibility within the people. Uh, and the third point is to do free elections under uh, uh, judges' uh, control and international uh, supervision in six months. And I think this will solve the situation. If, if, the, if the young people of Egypt get these demands uh, through, they, they will be very happy to go home and we can end up this problem. So, Mr. Suarez, I mean, should Mubarak go after after what happened last night, or do you think it's possible that he stay around until September? Look, uh, in all honesty, our president is not a coward. He's not. He's a military man. He's not someone who will flee the battlefield. For him, this is his legacy. It's too much to ask him to go. What we are asking him only is to stay, but to ensure that these promises are fulfilled and a declaration by the vice president or the prime minister, who have a lot of credibility, to that effect will solve the situation now. But the problem is people are, uh, need to be sure that these were not, are not pro promises because of this crisis, but are things that are really going to be done once and for all the right way. Uh, Mr. Sawiris, clearly the most important thing in consideration here uh, is the welfare of the Egyptian people. We know uh, there were some deaths in the clashes between uh, the anti-Mubarak and pro-Mubarak uh, protesters uh, last night. But I do want to ask you about the impact on business. Uh, we've seen, for example, the stock of your company, Orascom, decline in London. How much more can this hurt the value of Egyptian business if the uncertainty lingers? Sir, what's the price of freedom? That's an excellent no. question. What, what is the price? What is the price of freedom? Any, any, any price. There is no price for freedom. Freedom is priceless. If we lose in the stock, if our business gets affected, what we will win is finally uh, the freedom of the Egyptian people, their democratic rights to be restored, and a very stable country because democracy is the best insurance for investors and and, and honest businessmen like ourselves. Right, Mr. So I am not at all. I am not at all bothered by my stock going by a hotel or, or a shop or two being disrupted, you know. We are now totally uh, aligned uh, to see our country join the free world, join uh, the world of democracy and freedom and once and for all, without the fear of the security people, with, uh, with everybody knowing that if he gives his vote in the election, it will not be rigged, and we have the choice to choose our own uh, leadership. We, we know that Egyptian's prime minister has apologized, actually, for last night. We're seeing that in reports now. Uh, how worried are you about this contagion effect of, of people protesting now in Yemen, for example? We know even your business interests are lined up. You own the largest telecom company in all of the Middle East. I am not worried. I want this to happen. I want all the Arab youth and people to go out and change these uh, regimes that are not giving them the right, uh, the rights of freedom, their democratic rights. I've been propagating that a long time ago. I'm a person who believes in democracy and freedom of speech and all human rights. 
and so on. So even when people accuse me of doing business in countries like North Korea, I am there because I provided the people of North Korea with the right to speak. You were saying before that even as a businessman, there is no price to freedom. You want this movement to continue. You want freedom and democracy in the Middle East, even though perhaps your business is going to take a hit for the next few months as the dust settles. Is that right? It is exactly right, ma'am. You know, we are no less than you guys. We are no less than the Western world. We deserve, and our people deserve the right of speech, their human rights, and democracy. So my hope is that this wave that started in Tunisia is now Egypt will continue to all the Arab countries so the people can decide for their fate and, and, and have the right freedom of speech and all the human rights, the necessary ones. And Mr. Sawiris, what I would like to know is, are the other, is the Egyptian business community behind you? Do you have the support of your fellow CEOs and chairmen? Do they feel the same way? I am not, uh, I cannot speak on their behalf, you know. Uh, we have, uh, you know, you, you need to be a little bit, uh, there is a slight amount of braveness that you need to be able to speak like that. So I'm not sure everybody can uh, can speak like that or want to speak like that. I'm just speaking for myself. I cannot speak on their behalf. I know we have a lot of honest businessmen and I know that many of them would share my opinion. Maybe they're still scared to voice their opinion, but, but I'm sure they share with me that it is the right thing to do. And we all... Uh, believe that our president has done a lot of good for the country it's not all mistakes but it's a time for change and it's the right of the young people to request this change mr sawiris though it are is are your comments is this interview a call for bravery do you want to see your fellow chairman and see your your fellow corporate leaders in egypt stand up and be as bold and brave as you are clearly making these very direct comments about the future of your country of course I do. I mean, it will help me a lot and it will help all over Egypt. You know, I call on them all to make the same call. Because we cannot uh, deprive our other generations from the rights of freedom. The internet, the cellular industry and, and uh, has liberated the youth, you know, all over the world. It has given them a communication tool that is now beyond stopping. So uh, I, I call on them to do the same thing, you know. It's, uh, and it's the best thing for, you, for, for the West, for everybody. We are the backyard of Europe. If there is stability and democracy is the best measure of stability. If we want to prevent another Iran, we need to be sure that there is a democracy and people can choose, you know, so the, the extreme forces cannot claim that there is a dictatorship that is depriving them, because the masses today, the young people have proven that they are not going to allow uh, uh, fundamentalist or terroristic movements to kidnap their revolution. Mr. Sawiris, thank you so much for joining us. That is Najib Sawiris, the executive chairman of Araskan Telecom, Egypt's largest telecommunications company.